Hot Tackler, the unofficial Halo Universe podcast presents episode 704, Pizzagate, recorded live on October 17th, 2019. Everyone, welcome to Podtacular, the unofficial Halo Universe podcast. I am your host, The Storm. And I'm your co-host, Godzilla T. And we are really diving into the Halo Universe today because we have a bunch of community content that we are going to be covering. There's been a lot of stuff that we've missed since me traveling around across the country for Outpost Discovery. So, yeah, there's there's more projects and more updates than I could have fit in trying to go through stuff in three hours. And yes, I spent almost <laughs> three hours today before this podcast to go over everything that we're going to be talking about tonight. And that wasn't even everything. So yeah, we'll see how quickly this goes. <laughs> yeah, he, he comes into my stream, says good evening, and I make fun of him and then I never get a response. Yeah, I got otherwise preoccupied. <laughs> I, I think he just flat turned off the volume it was one of those things where because i still have this problem with mixer where the stream for you just froze at one point and i kind of forgot about it because i was working on the notes for tonight <laughs> so i had you and duquesne up and then at some point i'm just like oh yeah i don't hear anything anymore <laughs> wait a minute there's no noise yeah and sure enough your streams were frozen and i had to refresh because mixer and my internet just do not mix you know, we were talking about that before the show, and I hadn't been having that problem with other channels. I have been having it with my own channel, uh, but now I seem to be having it with everybody's channel now. You jinxed it. Yep. You jinxed it. It was going good. Maybe if I turn off the low latency mode, maybe that'll help. I don't know. If you want a 15 second delay on your stream, sure. Doesn't really matter. All, I, all I'm doing <laughs> is making sure it's still working. Fair enough. Speaking of streams, how we do for Freckin' Friday this past week? I don't know. You were there, sorta. For the, for the last half of it. For part people, of it, yeah. People were getting on me because I was waiting for pizza. 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 I got pizza. Excuses, excuses. We tried the new like cheese it pizza from Pizza Hut. Ugh. Sorry, it was, it was eh. Pizza Hut in general just ah. Eh. I love Pizza Hut. I, I I hear Pizza Hut and I think fuzzy. You know, I get fuzzy mouth. I love just, Pizza Hut. No, 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 not Pizza. Pizza no, Hut's no, my no. favorite pizza. <laughs> no, 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 fast no. food wise. No, Pizza Hut then Domino's. Oh God. Ugh. Well, everybody, what is wrong with you? Next thing you're going to say is Little Caesar's next. Not no, do not say your favorite is Papa John's. Actually, my my favorite is Papa Murphy's, but my favorite national go brand. out pizza mm-hmm. is Minsky's. Is that a national brand? Um, they sorta. Kind of. They used to be, but now they're, I think they're pretty much local. And then uh, as far as the chain stores, Godfather's. I've never heard of either one of those. Well, Godfather's is not near as big as it used to be, but they used to be a national chain. There's a lot of people around here that like Little Caesars, and I'm like, wow, there's a lot of hate towards me with pizza right now. (laughs) Yeah, you noticed? Wow. I mean, pizza, Pizza Hut, before they did their big toppings refresh, what, 15 years ago, was on the on the fence with me. It was decent, but it wasn't the top of the list. Now, I know I, we don't even I don't even consider Pizza Hut when we start talking pizza anymore. <laughs> and I will eat Papa John's before I will eat Pizza Hut. 
Alrighty. Wow. If for people listening to the download version of this, I'm getting a whole bunch of shade right now for liking pop for liking Pizza Hut. Maybe we should uh, include a copy of the chat <laughs> with the uh, audio download. Do a poll on Twitter afterwards in the Let's description. You know. <laughs> no, no. I'll- you need to come to Kansas City, and I'll take you out to Mansky's. All right. We are planning a road trip, possibly either next year or the year following. So we'll we'll make our way out there. You wander out here. I'll take I'll take you out and give you one night. I give you some barbecue. Next night, I give you some pizza. <laughs> or we do pizza for lunch and barbecue for dinner. Ooh, that sounds good. That sounds delicious. All right. So back to uh, the topic at hand. Back to the the actual subject of the night. Uh, <laughs> No, we had a lot of fun with uh, Halo 5. Uh, we started out in some Super Fiesta. We actually got a full full house um, to the point where we were uh, we had a full Warzone team. We had a lot of fun. <laughs> um, we got our ass handed to us a couple of times <coughs> in Warzone to the point where I, I was done with it. <laughs> it. It didn't really take me long to get done with Warzone. We we played Warzone and Warzone Assault. Um, we did spend some more time in Warzone Assault than we did in regular Warzone. But all in all, it was a lot of fun. Uh, we did end the night on a few customs. So we had a good mix. Uh, everybody seemed to have fun. So I appreciated everybody that showed up. And I hope to see you all again tomorrow. I've been playing... Halo Destiny. 5 mobile oh. this this week. Uh-huh. And I because I got invited to be part of the xCloud, which I'm sure there's lots of people out there that got invited to be in part of it. It was a pretty open invite. But I've been pretty impressed with it. You definitely need to have a decent and stable internet connection. But it doesn't have to be Google Fiber. You know, at home... I'm playing, um, you know, on my Wi-Fi, which my home network is actually, I've got it limited to 75 up, 75 down, uh, just to give me some cushion when I'm streaming, uh, so that if something else is taking part of it, I don't hit my hard limit for the actual connection, but I know that's still a lot more than most people do. Most people have, but I mean, even on my 4G you know, when I'm on my cell network, it, it works really well. And I've, I've been really surprised. There is a little bit of latency, but it's not bad. I mean, honestly, the latency in the Xbox app before they did the latest update uh, was worse. And that was on my home network. I didn't even notice there was an update to the app. <laughs> well, when they changed it from the Xbox app to the xbox companion app or the oh, xbox oh, oh, sorry, one app to sorry. the xbox companion app I thought you were talking about the game streaming yeah you're talking about compared to the console streaming versus game streaming right yeah okay the xbox app you can stream your your xbox game to your pc and you know that's been available ever since they launched the application but it's always been there's always been that delay And it was like playing on a TV with really poor response times, but it worked. It worked really well where now it works really good since they did a major update to the app. And, you know, they, when the app actually changed names is when the, it made a major improvement where there's almost no lag, at least nothing that I can perceive. Now I'm sure there's pro gamers out there that could see it. I'm not that, I'm not that good. Not that intense. <laughs> no. But, you know, for casual play, it works just fine. Uh, you know, like if I want to hop into the Master Chief Collection and screw around a campaign or something, it works just fine for that. And I don't have to get up off my couch. I can sit there and spend time with a wife, watch TV with her, and I can goof around on the Xbox. But the mobile streaming, I, I'm really impressed. The only thing I don't like is the fact that I'm playing Halo on a 5-inch screen. That is a little frustrating. 
And as you guys probably have guessed, my eyesight's not that good. Hence the reason I wear glasses. <laughs> so when you take a Spartan and t- make him, well, three quarters of an inch tall, he's a little hard to hit. <laughs> yeah. I tried a game of Super Fiesta for my first go, and my internet's having some weird issues and it's had some weird issues for a while now, and I just have never bothered to try to take care of it. So my, the lag that I experienced here at home versus what I actually experienced at E3 was significantly different because I'm getting probably a tenth of a second, maybe more delay on my input. And it wasn't nearly that bad at E3. The only real delay I've had in matchmaking is just simply finding a game because at the time I'm playing is usually while I'm sitting in my truck before work. And that would put it at about 4.30 on the West Coast. Not a lot of players on that server at 4.30 in the morning. <laughs> Probably not. Oh, that's you know, a good time to, to gain together and get to get achievements. <laughs> if that's your thing. Yeah, if you could connect to the West Coast server. I tried doing some Covenant Slayer this week, and the population was so low... There are three separate times where I got kicked out of matchmaking because there weren't enough people to match with. Yeah. Like I said, this morning, I just jumped into Super Fiesta for a quick game before I went into work, and it literally took about four minutes to find a match. Wow. It literally sat there and looked for players. And even then, we didn't start with a full team. Yeah. I don't know what's up with Either the population in Halo or some, something se- has seemed off with Halo matchmaking lately. Yeah. Uh, with the xCloud thing, you know, the biggest problem with it is the fact that the servers are on the West Coast. You know, the xCloud servers a- are on the West Coast. So it doesn't matter where you are in the cur- country, you're connecting to those servers. That could be another factor to my latency as it's going across the country. Could be. Me being in the middle of the country, it's not as bad. But I have noticed that it works good, and then the latency will show up for a little bit, and then it goes away again. That happened for me, too. But it's usually not for a whole game. The one thing I wish they would have included in this test is the ability to select your resolution. Because with my phone... My phone has a higher end screen, so it's, I think it's trying to display Halo 5 in 4K or 1440p at least. I can't remember what the actual refresh or what the actual max resolution of my phone is. I actually probably could look it up. I'm surprised they would be trying to push it out in 4K, especially for a test. I would guess that they would only try to push out 1080 for this early on in the test. Yeah, like I said, I you know, I don't know. Let's see here. Let me pull up the specs on my phone here. Yeah, 1440p monitor. 1440 by 2560. Hmm. And I know that impacts I know that the resolution will impact the quality of the stream. I'm not saying I'm having a bad experience. I would just would have liked the ability to bring the quality of the screen down in order to have more control over uh, input lag and a little bit more stable connection or yeah might make that might be something that will be available when they launch it for reels but you know it would have been nice if they could have done that for the test but that might not be part of the scope of the test either or maybe they'll expand the scope of it when they have enough test data to make a change to it. Yeah. Put in the f- the feedback of the app. Oh, I plan on it. I'm going to sit down. You know, like I said, I wanted to get some time with it. Like Sunday, I'm going to sit down and go, go onto the website and type out my thoughts on my first week and give them the feedback. I almost fired up Gears 5. 
But my luck, I'd get an achievement, and then I'd have to buy the game and finish it. <laughs> yep. That completionist. Get get one achievement, you're locked into getting them all. I know the feeling. So how did your streams go? Well. Nowhere? Pretty much. The lobbies for Halo Wars were not working again. So, yeah, the whole thing of where we were going to try to get me finished with achievements just didn't happen because the servers weren't working. (laughs) Oops. And this happened, I think, like two weeks ago as well, because we had uh, I I forget what we did before last week, but we so the last time we hopped on over to Spartan Spartan Assault and got some achievements there. Uh, This time we actually hopped I helped Laird get some achievements in Master Chief Collection. But yeah, uh, apparently the Fortnite servers weren't working, and apparently whenever any kind of servers aren't working, Halo Wars servers don't work. And it wasn't until late on Monday when they came back up, past the time I was going to bed. Because I checked before I went to bed. It's like, oh, they're finally working. And I was checking throughout the day because it was a holiday for me. And they just, they never came back up until like 10.30 at night or something like that, my time. So... We'll try again this weekend to finish out Halo Wars achievements. Yeah, it's like a certain other game when they launched on Steam. Uh, It was really broken. (laughs) Yeah. I did actually manage to get a couple of achievements this week off stream. Just me playing on MCC with some friends and whatnot. I got Dim Mac, which is getting uh, 250 beatdowns. And then I got Aim for the Head, which is getting a total of 2,500 headshots. Cool. Yep, just playing with friends and managed to get those two two more achievements. So in MCC, I have the Lazos and I think uh, that's, I think 10 other multiplayer achievements. Most of them are matchmaking specific. So I'm pretty freaking close. Those Lazos are just going to be in the pain in the butt. So yeah, we'll try again on Sunday to finish out Halo Wars. See how it goes. <laughs> Let's go ahead and move on to some matchmaking updates. What do we got for this week, GT? Oh, this week we are going to be doing some Halo 2 BR Slayer. It rotates in for Griff Ball. Yay! And just a friendly reminder for everybody. Remember that next week, the 24th, we go global double XP. Yeah. So every playlist is double XP. It'd be cool if the feature playlists were double double, so they were quadruple XP. I don't think they're going to do that, but it'd be cool if they no, did. No, it, it would be nice, yes, because Lord knows I could use it. <laughs> and I really feel people, I really feel for the people that are 151 going for 152 to get their 8 billion XP. Or whatever it is. I think that's what Misa said, yeah. It's eight million. It's a lot of XP. That's such a long way. I'm at 146 and I still have about four hundred thousand to get to one forty seven. I think I calculated it out. If I did Warzone Assault and did the legendary XP boost, I would have to play about like forty eight to fifty games, I think. Or no 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 no. Or uh, it was double XP, so about twenty-five games. Provided you got a consistent boost, right? Well, that can vary from game to game, depending on how well you do in that game. Well, the yeah, for those boosts, yeah. So yeah, it's a long way to go. What about on MCC? What have we got? Let's see. It looks like on the MCC, they are doing some balance changes to FFA infection. Is that month of the year? Yeah, it is that time of the year. Brains. Oh, um, (laughs) the the goal, the goal for their uh, tuning is uh, for survivors and zombies. The goal is to create the best possible experience for Slayers and Zombies. In Save One Bullet, Zombies have shields, 
where brain in the game type brains, they do not. They've added save one bullet in addition to brains to salvation on epitaph. Salivation. That's what I said. Not salvation, salivation. Oh, salivation, sorry. Like salivating. (laughs) My tongue covered up my eye teeth. Couldn't see what I was saying. Uh, They replaced brains with save one bullet on brain freeze narrows. Added save one bullet in addition to brains to haunted manor manor on foundry. Uh, They replaced brains with save one bullet on spooky house sandbox. And also for the month of October, if you complete 10 infection matches, uh, you will receive the flooded nameplate. These are granted at the end of every week throughout the month. So be sure to get your matchmaking game in on infection. Yay. And we're halfway through the month. So you got half a month to get her done. If you enjoy playing infection, I can handle one or two games and then I, then I've had enough and I go somewhere else. Yeah, I'm not most of the infection person either. Unishek loves it. I mean, I can I can see the appeal of it. And yeah, it has a unique gameplay. It's just not my game style. I just don't. There's lots of cool customs that utilize the infection game mode that I like. Yes. Hogs from Heck, Halo, Duck Hunt. But yeah, just stock infection can be kind of rough. Yeah, um, the hide-and-seek one. Prop hunt. Mm-hmm. Prop hunt's fun. Remember when we used to do hide-and-seek on that one map in Halo 4? Yeah, it basically was the first version of prop hunt, where you could hide in rocks or boxes or... Trees. Trees, yeah. I forget the name of that one. I don't remember. You could You could actually go there and blend into the map. Mm hmm. That was a lot of fun. So, the community spotlight came out 30 minutes before we started. Of course. Of course. And I still haven't moved my scene over. So, for everyone watching, disappeared me. Hello, web browser. <laughs> hey, hey, web browser. Web browser. We got a cute little cartoon drawing of two hunters up to start the thing. So, it's. Cute little hunters. Hey. Bond Brothers. I think Nisa's going to like that one. <laughs> We've got a couple of music stuff at the top here as well. Someone did a Halo theme cover. I haven't listened to this. I haven't listened or watched to anything in this update because of everything else that I was updating. So we'll, we'll come back around to things if anything is noteworthy for us to talk about next week. It's always cool to see people doing covers of the Halo theme, though, so I'm sure it's a wonderful delight to listen to. Uh, We've got some Minecraft stuff. They actually had uh, someone on from the Minecraft team for the social stream yesterday, so it's appropriate to have a little Minecraft show and tell in here. Someone recreated the frigate, the Savannah, in Minecraft. It's a ship that took part in the battles during Halo Reach, or the Fall of Reach. It's a really well done Minecraft build. Well, the nice thing about UNSC ships, they ships they lend themselves to square building <laughs> materials very well. It's it, digital Legos. Digital Legos. <laughs> but yeah, they, they, they lend themselves to that particular building block shape very well. Yep. Uh, let's see. We've got a really cool kind of skeleton mix Spartan cat up next. Reaper cat. Reaper cat. <laughs> She's come to claim those who can't drive. <laughs> or that can drive. Uh, yeah, they got a couple oh. of different versions of that. Goes along with the spooky theme. Yeah, really, really cool stuff. Second one looks, almost looks like Carter. Yeah, it kind of, it kind of is a mix. Either way, it's pretty it's pretty cool. Yeah, because it has the little helmet piece on. You you might be right. I I didn't pick up on that for at first. Even Snickerdoodle has cat vibes from this one. So the arms what throws people. 
because of you know her robotic arm. It, I it think might, it's supposed. To, it might be cat. The, the only the only reason is because in the second picture that they have there, it looks more of the mask masculine model, the male model. Yeah, I can see that. Either way, it's pretty wicked. Mm-hmm. I like the energy sword scythe. That's really cool. Got a little piece of artwork f- kind of for a laser run with Master Chief and the Warthog. Is this oil painting or pastels? Maybe pastels? I'm not, I don't really know how to identify these. I don't know why I try. <laughs> this one's interesting. A lot more of the elegant style curves for Master Chief. Uh, what else we got down here? We've got some renders, some more pencil drawings. Oh, that's cool. A little anime style Hayabusa. Or manga style. Sorry, not anime. Lots of really cool drawings and sketches this time around. Very nice. <laughs> little toy Arbiter holding a flamethrower. That's cool. The Brute Chieftain up here. This was, looks really, really good. I really like the, the artwork here. Got in the spacesuit. All pink and purple. Yeah, lots lots of Inktober stuff in this update. Definitely go check this out on the Halo Waypoint site because there's a lot of really cool stuff in here. Yeah, there is. It, quite a bit. That profit's really there, good. There's, e- there's even a Master Chief cake. I haven't even gotten to the cake yet. I kind of want to just scroll down to the cake, but I want to get through the rest of this properly first. This is interesting. It's Master Chief just made in polygons except for the visor. Like larger polygons. Anything else noteworthy before I start scrolling down like a madman? Yeah, you might want to roll down to about eye candy. Oh, this is cool. This is the yeah, library entrance, but all the hall stuff is computer chips. That's interesting. That's a really cool concept design. Concept art for Halo 4. Well, not concept art, but artist drawings of, of Halo 4 type stuff. How how far you want me to... Oh, wow, there's a lot of ink stuff. How far you want me to scroll down? Oh, there's the cake. Yep, there's the cake. Cake. Let us eat cake. We've got some Mega Constructs uh, still pictures. It's pretty cool there. Ooh, chalk. You're almost there. Wow. Yeah. That's impressive. That is body paint. Yep. Seven hours it took. Wow. That's impressive. Seven hours. That's really cool. And I think she did it standing in front of a mirror. Yeah, a lot of body art artists kind of just, I guess, do it by themselves. Wow, that's really good. That's a cool little energy sword tattoo. Color tattoo. And of course, ODST. Two ODSTs. Wow, that must have hurt. Getting that one done. Wow, a lot. Well, it's Inktober, so it makes sense. Lots of tattoos. Run from the grunt game mode. Is that like a Slenderman type of thing? <laughs> Again, I haven't watched any of these videos, so I'm not sure what all there are in here. Uh, another Halo 5 anniversary video that they've posted. Some montages. Some other videos. And then we're down here to the tweets. More arts, clips, renders, and then for Doodle Snickers, it's a, a cat version of the Halo CE game box art. <laughs> that's funny. I got to show my wife this. She would love this. Oh, that's funny. That's hilarious. Very nice. That is quite the collection for this week. Uh-huh. It's always a pleasure to look at those. There, there's a l- and kind of sad, sad, kind of saddens me to see how many more people have actual talent than I do. <laughs> we we have talent. We just have different kind of talent. Yeah, the talent I have, nobody really appreciates. Not to that level, at least. <laughs> I'm sure if you wanted to build a warthog, you probably could. Just it would take the time and money to do so. <laughs> So that was the community update. And we've got more community related stuff to go over because that's all this episode's about. First up, though, we do have 
a couple other things before we dive on to community. Sketch put out a tweet yesterday, kind of hinting at the next Reach flight coming for the PC. So if anyone's interested in doing the PvP on PC, make sure you have your Halo Insider profile updated, your DX Diag info uploaded, and all of your stuff verified. So email address and all that stuff. So you can get a shot at getting in the PC flight for Reach. And if any thing or if the community is right on what might be happening after this flight we could see reach here pretty soon good it the general going consensus is after this pc flight unless there's any other kind of big game breaking things or whatnot that needs to be tested this is probably going to be the last flight before release so if you want a chance to help test it before it comes out make sure your information is updated HaloInsider.com. Go do it. On the product front, we have a new Halo Hot Wheels. This is the Sword Hog. And John Friend posted this uh, a couple weeks ago, actually. But this is the first time I think we're actually mentioning it on the podcast. So it's the same red hog that you have in the game for Halo 5. And it's just the, the Sword Hog. I gotta see if I can find one of those somewhere. A lot of the stores around me do not stock Halo stuff. So Target, Walmart whatever just is not very good at stocking anything halo related yeah what i can understand that it sucks but it is what it is all right on to community stuff this is going to be the bulk of what we're talking about tonight uh first up some fellow podcast related news uh podcast evolve episode 194 they did an interview with andreas la uh Tourette, he's a technical artist over at Falcon's Creative Group who was responsible for creating the ring experience that we got to see at Halo Outpost this year. So if you want to learn more about the process on what went into it, how they made some of the assets and chose some of the things that they showed off during the ring experience, then make sure you check out that episode. It's about 40 minutes long and it was recorded with, I think, Oren and Krista. And it's a really cool interview. Definitely recommend go checking it out. They're almost at 200. It's just Pro Talk almost at 100. So we got two pretty significant milestones for some fellow podcasts coming out here pretty soon. Uh, Finish the Fight podcast. Uh, we've mentioned them briefly before. They're a fairly new podcast to the Halo scene. Uh, they've been doing pretty well and they have a little Spreadshirt store. So if you want to support them, then you can head on over to uh, shop.spreadshirt.com slash finish the fight and get some merchandise over there. On the play Griff Ball front, we did mention a couple weeks ago that Rage More Nerd announced his stepping down from Griff Ball administration and stepping away from playing. He and uh, Menzi actually also, also stepped down. Sonic is the one that writes uh, this uh, Griff, play Griff Ball going forward article. And he basically recounts some of the effort that both Rage More Nerd and Minzy put into Griff Ball to maintain it and keep going with what it is today. And it's a pretty good, humble recount of everything that they've done. So definitely go check it out. Um, it's over at playgriffball.com. Uh, Sonic mentioned that he'll be taking over most of Rage's responsibilities. And then another community member who's been actually contributing a lot to. Uh, the Griffball community, uh, not and KOT, has been promoted to an administrator role. And he joins the other administrators, Silva, Priest, and Thumping Hawk, and they will be continuing to run the Griffball related communities, tournaments, and um, seasons. They're also taking a close look at the flighting that is going on with Reach. So it's possible that after this season of the IGL, and depending on when the AGLA starts for their next season, that we might see the mainline game being Halo Reach on MCC. So that could be a, a cool change coming to, to Griff Ball. I know they did a couple of seasons with Halo 3. I don't know if they stayed on Halo 3 for, um, for a while or if they went back to 5. I haven't been following that closely, but could be seeing some Reach stuff before Infinite comes out. Should be. Did you ever play Reach Griffball? 
Uh, I, I mean, I played it in matchmaking, not religiously, but yeah, I did play it. Are you a fan of speedball or are you a fan of the more classic style griffball? I mean, both are fun for different reasons. I mean, as far as the classic griffball, I think I like Halo 3 better in the, as far as the classic play style. Mm -hmm. uh, it just didn't really feel the same in reach. I mean, even with the removal of the Spartan abilities, it didn't feel the same, just the way the gravity hammer worked. Yeah. But I'm by no mean a griffball aficionado. <laughs> It's one of those game type, another one of those game types that I really suck at. So, there's a pretty significant divide in the griffball community when Reach first came out about the classic kind of slower griffball style, and then the speed griffball, which had the sprint and the evade and all that stuff added on top. Or I guess it was technically griffball evolved, is what it was called. I was in the camp of classic griffball because <laughs> the movements just was a little too hectic for me, for my taste. So it did. It, well, actually the, the griff ball evolved added a whole new level to the game. You know, with adding that mechanic, it, it changed the way the game played. And sometimes it was good. And sometimes it wasn't, you know, the one thing that always bugged me about griff ball was the spawn killing. And uh, you know, I just, there was no real way to combat that, uh, you know, not with the way the game type was actually set up. It was a lot worse in Halo 3. The, the spawning system has at least gotten a little bit better to where you don't spawn near the spawn camper, but you still have to kill the spawn camper in order for them to stop spawn camping you. <laughs> I had to do that to DJ for the last game at Halo Outpost of Griff Ball. <laughs> <clears throat> he was back there, or at, I mean, I'm not in DJ, but on DJ's team, someone was back there spawn killing, and I had to go back and kill him. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's a, a legitimate strategy, and if the game lets you do it. Yeah. But in the, the design of the map, there's that was just the one thing that you really couldn't design out. Yeah, not without some heavy modification or some really weird spawn teleporting related tricks or whatever whatever well you know they in order for that to work they'd have to put respawn points out in the middle of the map yeah which doesn't doesn't work yeah it would it would break the spawn camping cycle but it also makes you spawn away from your spawn or away from your goal where the enemy team is trying to get to mm -hmm. so you could literally spawn on the other side of the team so you know they don't get me wrong it's just that's the only thing that i really never liked about the game i yeah it's it'd be curious to, to see what the griffball admin guys think about that or if they think there's a better way to address that or if it needs even needs to be addressed at all well i'm sure it won't be because the the only real way to do that that I can think of is put some kind of kill barrier up but then you limit the mobility of the other team by doing that mm -hmm. you know you basically limit them into a funnel yeah it's it's an interesting conundrum that has to be kind of thought about well, anyway, I mean all, all the game's fun yeah for sure Moving on over to Forge Hub, there's been two community favorite votes for the past couple of months, one for September and one for October. Uh, every month they have nominated maps that get nominated by the community, and then I believe they, uh, I think the staff votes for what their favorites are. Or, you know, they, no, they put, so they take nominations, they post the top 10, and then they let the community vote. So, the votes for September, this is really cool. There's a Space Invaders map. Yeah, I'm just sitting here looking at it. There's, there's a video connected to that post if you take a look at it. It's definitely kind of slow, and it, it's a little bit painful to watch, but it works. Yeah. 
I mean, for an implementation in Forge, yeah, it, it works pretty well. It's another one of those arcade-style customs. The next one for second place is called Suppression, and this one is kind of a uh, Forerunner and nature-inspired remake of Lockout. Uh, I guess it should be a little more clear clarifying with that because it's, I mean, Forerunner is kind of what Lockout is. I guess it's a little bit more Covenant, technically. Still has some of that Forerunner vibe to it, but it has kind of the newer Sunion slash Sanghelios feel and atmosphere to the map and some really cool lighting effects, too. I actually would be interested in trying that out for a normal Lockout type game situation. And then first place is Zai's Respite by Punisher2510. And this is a Griff Ball map. It's kind of a circular Griff Ball court. Uh, it's, I'm not sure how you would describe this, but it kind of has a Final Fantasy type of feel to it. It's a very aesthetically pleasing map. It has like cherry blossoms and it's in the pool of water. So it's, it's really cool. And there are some really cool nominations as well. Uh, lots of practical, a few more just kind of aesthetic feeling maps in here, but overall pretty good submissions. For October, we had another set of 10. The top three the th for third place, uh, the first map is Oracle by Nano. And this is a map that was built around the, I think, was the mission called Oracle? The first half of it in Halo 2? Yeah. Okay. So it's based off of the room where you let... Where you fight the heretic. Yes. The last room there. It looks really cool. It has a... Uh, what's what's the map in Halo 3? The DLC map. That has like the bridge in the middle and the two kind of upper levels. It's construct? No, it's not Construct. Well, Construct is a multiple level map. Right, it's it's not that one. It's it's it was one of the DLC ones. I don't know why I'm drawing a blank on it because I've played on it recently. Yeah, I can't think of what you were talking about. It looks like it kind of has a map flow similar to that, but it looks like a very good remake of that room from Halo Two. Most definitely, it'd be cool if the floors actually moved objects. Just add that little effect in there. Yeah. Second place was Sir Alone Grift Ball. This is by Punisher or Punisher 2510. And again, this is another Grift Ball map. And this one is Dark Souls inspired. And then the first place is called Tribunal. This is by Soldat du Christ. And this is a very spooky one. Kind of a demon head type of thing going on. Yeah, kind of Raiders of the Lost Ark type thing. Kind of. A little bit, yeah. So those are the community picks for Forge Hub for the past couple of months. For the 2v2 contest, I haven't heard anything new about that yet. Should probably check up and see when they're doing the, the voting for that. Oh, wait, the deadline for this is actually a while out. It's, it's 2020, January 1st. I didn't realize it was that far out. Apparently it is. Huh. That, okay. So I, I guess we'll come back around to this in 2020. Well, they want to make sure everybody gets plenty of time. Yeah. Uh, for Halopedia, there was a Lore Thursday a couple weeks ago. You want to read that one for us, GT? Sure. I didn't highlight it, but it's, it's a quick read. Yeah. <clears throat> this is for... Uh, October 3rd, Sergeant Thomas Chang was a veteran of multiple engagements, including the battle for Installation 04. During the second battle of New Mombasa, he was unfortunately killed by a Covenant air assault. And then they've got a picture of uh, a Marine with uh, like the cover art. It's kind of cool. Yeah, this was from the diorama. I don't know if, if this is supposed to be that specific character or if they just had the reference reference pictures. Yeah. 
I mean, somebody had to go in and uh, somebody had to go in and take the screenshot and put the Halo Three and everything in it. But yeah, yeah, that's cool. True. So yeah, thanks for. It's been a while since they've done the Lore Thursday, and it's, it was interesting to see that they had only done one in the last couple of months. But anyways, there you go. They do them every once in a while, and they're they're kind of cool to check out. And they post them over on the uh, Halopedia Twitter. All right, next up we've got... Uh, we haven't really talked about this before, and at some point I'd like to have some of the folks responsible for the Golden Monitor Awards on to talk about what it is. But they were supposed to close submissions back in August, I think. And there was supposed to be a whole bunch of voting and looking at all the stuff. And they've said on their Discord server that the voting is still going on, that there's, there's still a plan to have a award show type of thing and, and announce the awards. But they're just kind of behind right now, and they'll, they'll still be getting around to it. So if anyone that listens to us is involved with Machinima or has submitted anything for it, uh, they're still working on it, so don't need to worry. They'll they'll come when it's ready, just like everything else that's going on right now in the Halo community. <laughs> You've got Halo Reach coming out when it's ready. You've got Installation One coming out when it's ready. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's kind of crazy, but at least at least people are taking the time to get it right the first time. Yes. Uh, on the content side, we'll start including this here soon as well, but I wanted to point out a specific collaboration that happened recently. And GT, I don't know if you watched this. You, you probably did because you're a lot better about staying on top of these videos than I am. But uh, Hidden Xperia did a collaboration with Installation 00 on Oni's influence and impact on the Halo mythos. Yeah, I haven't watched this one yet, but I do plan on it. Between the two of them, I think it's about 35 to 40 minutes of content. And it's it it's really good. It, it does go back to the insurrection and all of the things that Oni's done between the the peace treaty between the Sangheili and the humans and things that they've done that we've covered in the Cute of Five books and other uh, novels that have been put out there. It's a very in-depth look at, at what they've been doing. And they speculate some things that could be brought up in Halo Infinite or could influence how the game's story is played out, which is pretty interesting. So if you're into that kind of stuff, I highly recommend you check it out. Is there any other YouTube content that has been notable of late that you've watched recently? Mm, nothing that really has jumped out at me, no. Okay. Again, this is something that I'd like to start including. Might be weekly, might be bi-weekly, but at least for this content roundup that we're doing for the end of the month, per se, I want to start trying to include this in here. All right, on to some projects, because we've got plenty of those in the community to talk about. Um, this is where I just eventually gave up because there's so many updates so there's we'll cover most of it there's still a lot of other stuff that we haven't covered yet and we'll get to that in a little little bit later on the installation 01 front it's been a while since we've actually looked at any of the updates so we're going to go through three of them four of them three of them four of them to start with uh so from july 21st they actually had a demonstration from one of their coders uh kendall and they do a deep dive into their projectile component system and for anyone who wants to get nerdy and techy into coding and all that stuff it's an interesting read through it goes through how projectiles uh, kind of get emitted and then he also has some examples of of doing some position tracking and some orientation of basically for AI to be able to look at specific targets. So it's it's interesting. There's there's one little animation loop here of about 14 Master Chief helmets looking at a mouse cursor going through an environment. 
but it's basically kind of a an early look into how projectiles work. So you know you have the plasma pistol that tracks uh, certain players, and then you have AI looking at certain players to target and whatnot. So it's basically breaking down how they're implementing that whole system within Installation 01. Yeah. So if that's something that you're interested in, it's it's an interesting read through and, and look through. Obviously, I haven't read through everything, but I looked through enough of it to kind of get a general gist of what they're talking about. It's a lengthy read. It'll take you probably a good 10, maybe 15 minutes to get through everything that they're talking about. But if you want a deeper understanding on how a lot of this stuff works, it's worth checking out. And then at the bottom, they have a model of a fuel pump. This is actually from a map that they showed back in 2018 called Goliath. And they've done a little bit more work. So this is just one of the assets they've been working on and been refining. And they have finally put out a version for it. It's a very interesting piece. Does it look like any fuel pump I've ever worked on? No. <laughs> That's because it's the future. Uh, next update we have is from August 4th. You have probably seen the updated concept art, which is actually going to be part of their main menu. And there's a little kind of evolution of how the concept art piece came to be by Avix. I'm guessing that's how you say her name. So if you want to look at how the piece of concept art developed from start to finish, then you can head on over and check out that update. There's also a little community spotlight in here for for the Installation 01 community specifically. Some pretty cool things in here. It's like a, their own separate community update or community spotlight that they do. Got some pen art, some pencil art, and some renders. So an interesting little, uh, little thing to check out there. The next update that they had was a kind of team interview for one of their 3D artists who goes by GeoBurb. That's a pretty interesting name. Uh, like I said before, he is a 3D artist for the team. And he helped create the map Obelisk and also helped create the forklift that is throughout this update as well. Uh, he's currently pursuing a degree in Bachelor of Fine Arts for animation. And you can learn more about him, his history behind Halo, what other things he's worked on for his... Uh, 3D art, and just learn more about him in general over there. Then the final update that we'll go through is for August 18th. And here they showcase their Forerunner crate, which looks uh, kind of interesting. Like a box. Well, it's a box in the plus shape. Well, it looks more like an energy core than a box, yeah. I guess. Yeah, it, it really does. It's got transparent glass on the sides of it. And it's got the very kind of foreigner metal type design that you would see most commonly in Halo 3. I, I don't know why you would have a crate in a plus shape. It's a plus crate. It looks more like an energy core than a crate. But anyway, that's just me. It really does. When I first saw it, I thought it was an energy core. And then as I read on, it's like, oh, it's a crate. Okay. <laughs> Whatever. It is what it is. There are, have been two other Weekly updates, we'll get to those at a later time. Maybe next week, maybe further on, I'm not sure. There's also community, some community spotlight artwork on this post as well, so you can check that out. Some Halo related, some not Halo related. On the Halo SPV3, SPV3 front, there's a lot of updates here. They actually have started posting their own community updates. Uh, the short version of it is Simon, who is their community manager currently uh, made a short comment on people commenting on SPV 3.2 being dark in certain maps. Short story is there is an incorrect setting in the HDR system that they have implemented into SPV 3 specifically. And they've gone and changed that for some maps and also have redone the light maps for some of the maps as well. It's a very night and day difference. I don't know if you're looking at these images, GT, but there are some very s specific differences between the two versions of the maps. Top one being the old I one. Would if the I would if the web page would ever load. Oh, 
<laughs> oh, there we go. Yeah, I, there's some significant changing changes in the lighting. If you look at that last one specifically with the wraith, in the first image you basically can't see the back of the wraith or any of the. Oh yeah, it's really, really a big change there. Yeah, there's a whole long explanation that Masters puts to it if you're interested in the nitty gritty of what they've changed. But basically, they kind of fixed a couple of their light maps and the HDR settings that they used, and everything looks a lot better now. There's some other upgrades coming to SPV3. They have a new kernel that they've been working on, which helps with uh, kind of interfacing new features around the Halo's custom edition executable. Uh, there's custom resolutions that they're including, borderless windowed mode, uh, some updates to loading times and updating for SPV3 in specific. And then there's a couple of new things that they've been adding as well. There's a Discord-rich presence that they've been refining and is now a lot uh, more complete. So whenever you're playing and you have it to where Discord will report what game you're playing, it'll actually show what mission that you're playing as well in Discord. There's a Windows 10 tile support. So if you're a Windows user, you know that you have some large tiles that you get from the start menu. They've actually gone through and added the hooks in to make a large tile. So it's not the, just the, the color with the small little normal Windows icon on it. So making some quality of life improvements and also some added features there as well. That's it for the community update. They have made an announcement as well for another mod that they're working on called Legacy. Uh, there was a announcement made on October 9th that the mod has went into production and they're not announcing specific details at this time, but it is more along the lines of single player, not campaign. We'll have more details on it soon, but as this point, that's, that's all they've really said. Way to oversure there, guys. Oh. <laughs> So that's it on the SPV3 side of things. Over on the Sins of the Prophets side of the house, um, from Unicracken, I'm just going to uh, quote this out here. He says, we've had several people contact us over the last few months asking us when our Stellaris mod will come out on the console edition of the game so that fans can finally live out their dreams of Halo Space Combat on the Xbox. We've even had folks from 343 ask us about it, so we know the excitement is high all around. We hadn't heard anything about when mods are coming to consoles, so we decided to reach out to Stellaris and see if they had any updates for the community. At present, they do not. It's still something they would like to do, but not something they're currently ready to talk about. So what can you do about this? Politely, at, or politely let Stellaris know that you're ready for mods to come to console edition. Tell them on Facebook, Twitter, or Discord. Keep asking about it. Development teams focus on items that create buzz and have the community's attention, so if you create the buzz... It will focus more on your wants. Again, keep it clean. I think we mentioned the Stellaris mod of Sins of the Prophets a while ago, because I think I recall me saying, oh, that's kind of interesting. I didn't know they had a another version of Sins of the Solar Empire on a different mod, or Sins of the Prophets on a different mod, or a different platform, I guess, technically. We may have to get Unicracken on to talk about that a little bit more. Probably. There's a lot of people need to get on the show. <laughs> In other news regarding to Sins of the Prophets, they've had Stellar State Logic join the team as a portrait and concept artist. And she has gone on to actually make a uh, concept art for a Shanshayim prelate. It's a leader that they're working on adding into the game. It got so much positive feedback that there's actually a wallpaper version of it too. So if you're in the Sins of the Prophets Discord, then hell on over get the wallpaper and start using it. I think it's a really cool piece and it fits very well with how I kind of envisioned the, the prelates, especially since we're reading through broken circle right now. And there's kind of mention of that a little bit on the operation trebuchet front. There is a lot in here to talk about. I'm contemplating actually just skipping this tonight and, and maybe going over it, but 
Well, I'll just describe it. They have some pictures of a quarters, a squad bay, and a sleeping bay on a UNSC ship that they've been showing off. There's also some observation decks and some details that they're showing on window trim and other uh, kind of room assets. They've got a medical bay with other textures for walls that are very kind of white and red medical themed. They're also looking at some cryopods, introducing those um, into some of the assets that they're working on. They've got some doors that they've been showing off and some, some other walls. And again, this is all in their, uh, their news channel on Discord. Lots of screenshots that they've been showing off. So if you're interested in that, you can just hop on over there and check it out. Now uh, you want to take the next few here, GT? Uh, let's see. You just finished up with Trebuchet, right? Yeah. Next one's Looks like we've got Coral. Hill Downfall. Oh, there's the one above. Coral. Coral? Yeah. Oh, there it is. Sorry. Right above. Sorry. I, it blended in with the, uh, <laughs> the crossed out one. <laughs> it's all good. Uh, looks like Coral's got a screenshot of the black hole. Uh, showing the HUD of their uh, system. It's kind of a more of a classic Halo 2 slash Halo 3 era HUD. Looks like currently they show four different grenades. They do have an icon for your uh, active weapon and your uh, stowed weapon. Uh, Halo 3 style Looks like health and shield bar uh, with a compass along the top. Looks like they've got an FPS counter on it. And uh, field of view looks a little stretched. It does. I don't know if that's just the depth of field that they're using in relation to the character body. But yeah, it definitely has that long barrel feel from Halo CE. <laughs> yeah, it the BR kind of looks like you kind of took the stock and went stretched it. Yeah, just a bit. After that, we've got Halo Downfall, uh, which they're showing some untextured weapon models. Looks like they've got uh, an SMG uh, and then a suppressed SMG, which they look pretty cool. Be interested once they get them textured. They have a concept of a CCP D officer. Just basically the armor mm -hmm. and outfit. Very reminiscent of the Marines from Halo 3 ODST. Yeah, I was actually going to... Like the police the Marines. Top, the, yeah, the police. Yeah. I guess I'm thinking of more Reach. The, the cops in Reach. Makes a little more sense there. But yeah, OD, ODST-ish Reach type look. Yep. The next on that, we have Project Autumn. Looks like this update's from Iowa on August 9th. Mm hmm He says, yeah, we know the trailer was bad. We rushed it. They rushed it to meet the deadline, and it shows. Don't worry. They, they're working at their own pace again, and we'll have a much... They have some much better eye candy for us. I forgot the, the uh, what the project on the trailer was. I'm having to look it up real quick. Uh, I I didn't get to watch it either, but uh, got some shots of it would be uh, their version of Master Chief's armor, the Spartan armor, which looks really good actually, uh, really detailed. Uh, they've got some shots of their version of the Spanker rocket launcher mm -hmm. with plasma rifle. Looks really good. It holds true to the original. It really does. These these weapons look really good, and and the chief model too is. I'm I'm very impressed. They've got uh, some variations on the chief's helmet. Mm hmm. Some low poly stuff for the time being, but. Uh, looks like they have uh, concept art for one of their multiplayer maps or something that looks kind of like Valhalla type map you know green forerunner structure on the ring 
Then they have uh, what well, looks like some concept cover art. It definitely has that infinite vibe to it. Yeah. We've got a shot of uh, Spartans and or ODSTs dropping in drop pods uh, onto like a ring surface. Uh, and then you've got another one that's a, a definite infinite sh- vibe shot. You know, a, a spanning shot of the ring, you know, through the forest. Uh, for this next part on their Discord, they actually have some Nealer sound effects that they've been working on. They have a, a weapon draw Nealer effect, a reload, and a super combine. And they all sound pretty convincing. They also have a little Q&A channel, and I've pulled out all the answers that they've had over the past couple weeks, I think. They're currently looking for some C++ programmers and anyone familiar with Unreal Engine 4 to help them with the project. They plan on having all the mainline weapons plus a few of their own in their game, so approximately 40 right now. Someone asked them about if they're going to have any equipment or armor abilities, and they said they're looking to do some kind of combination of the two, basically limited-use armor abilities. The kind of story that they're looking for is something to be told in similarly to a Spartan Ops style storytelling method. And right now the main thing that they're working on is assets. There's been a couple of new projects that have been popping up and we'll cover a couple of them. There's still a few that I haven't had a chance to actually go through and document yet. Iron Hammer being one of those and another one uh, being uh, Project Talon. There's another one that I just found today, and that one is a cont- or Contact Harvest. So I don't know if it's basically trying to take the name of the book, but uh, you want to read what that one is? Just the description that they gave? Sure, it looks like uh, what they got is Contact Harvest, their non-for-profit Halo fan video game adaption of the novel Contact Harvest. Set in 2524, you play as Sergeant Johnson leading up to the first days of the Human Covenant War. That actually sounds a lot of fun. Yeah. Where you're pitted against a seamlessly unstoppable alien force. So, you basically, it looks like you're going to be playing the game playing the book Contact Harvest. That's kind of cool. At least the battle scenes <laughs> part of it. Uh, looks like they have a question and answer. Uh, what is the project about? This is for Genesis. Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah. There's a section break in there. <laughs> but yeah. You so another... really ought to space that a little bit further. Yeah, I was trying to make a bunch of stuff in here. <laughs> My bad. The, the the page is infinitely long, Dust. I know. That's why they have the enter button. There, is that better? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so yes, Genesis is another project. What's what's Genesis about? Well you done spoiled it now. <laughs> Looks like Genesis. It's a fan uh fan made Halo pro, uh Halo game. That will be will have a single player and co op campaign, as well as very various multiplayer modes, including invasion. Ooh, they put their own twist on invasion. Mm-hmm. Ought to be interesting. They will have a classic multiplayer mode. However, some game modes will be different. Uh, they will have playable elites. Uh, it will be on Unreal Engine four. Seems pretty common use engine now. Pretty much. Probably because it's free and it's available. Yep. Platforms, they are currently looking to release it on Windows. Possibly Mac. Yeah, and that that's pretty much it. There wasn't really a lot of description in their Discord. That's just what they have currently. So at some point we'll get one of the devs on or community managers over there and Ask them to tell us a little bit more about it. They do have some stuff that they're showing off. Uh, they have a pistol, which actually looks pretty cool. It's the first weapon model that they've actually fully textured, and that's going to be implemented in the game. It's the M6C Magnum, and it's modeled by Voided Steel. 
And then it's textured and rendered by Wolf Fire 1010. So there you go. That's it for the projects for this week. We obviously we didn't cover all of them. We'll get to more of them at a later date. Maybe next week, depending on what we do. It'll probably be in a couple weeks at least. There is one other thing I wanted to point out because I found this actually in one of the other Halo discords, but uh, Omar, who goes by or whose online handle is Omar L O T R C online, says that he and O the Godfather have been working on the unofficial matchmaking catalog for MCC. This is a, a Google Sheet. And basically all the MCC updates that we talk about every week, the stuff that posts them's updates, they've been documenting since they've been, since I guess Postums has been posting the updates back in 2018. Wow. It's an impressive spreadsheet. Yeah, that would be. All the bulleted lists of everything they've changed is basically what they've captured. And it's interesting to see how much stuff has changed, especially with a lot of what they changed on really early on. You can definitely see where there are a lot of changes at the start, or or maybe they've just done a better job at consolidating a lot of the points, but there's a, definitely a lot more text in the earlier updates, and the text is gradually reduced, and then you see little spikes on, on certain things. Yeah, yeah, those little spikes usually revolve around where one of their fixes broke something. Or some refresh or yeah, some highlight of something. I think they use the refresh just to cover up when they have to fix something they broke. <laughs> <laughs> they link all of the forum posts as well where they have the updates. So if it's something that you're interested in and seeing how the playlists have changed over time for MCC since they started doing the playlist updates, then this is worth checking out. And that was it. Next week, I'm hoping to take a stab at getting John Friend and DJ Blue on the show to do our post-mortem podcast that we've been teasing and talking about. Kind of get their take on how Outpost went, things that they think went well, things that they think could have been done better, and just get a general sense of how they interpreted fans reaction to the whole event. I personally have talked about it plenty of times on this show, so it'll be interesting to kind of get their perspective on it. And we are going to have a couple other people on at some point to get kind of a better fan reaction uh, about things. So hopefully that will get planned down the road. And I've already been talking to my outpost panelists about getting some podcasts going for that coming in the next month or so. So Outpost isn't quite done with us yet. (laughs) So we'll be bringing that in here in a little bit. And then hopefully in about three weeks time or so, I'll be done with Broken Circle and we'll be doing another book club podcast. So next week, the plan is to do a Outpost postmortem. So if there's anything that you guys have as far as feedback or things that you thought about outposts if you attended then please let us know we're going to be making a post about it on social media and discord to gather feedback from people if that doesn't turn out then we'll probably post a tweet and facebook post and other social media either on sunday or monday with a topic of the week that we'll ask input on stay tuned we'll let you know if anything specific comes out of it but that's what we're planning on currently With that said, you can find us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Discord. Just search for Podtacular. You can also find us on Twitch, Mixer, and YouTube for our streams. We stream every Thursday night at 9 p.m. for our podcast. On Friday nights, GT hosts Fragon Fridays at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. And we've been doing Halo 5 and probably will continue to do Halo 5 until Reach comes out on PC. Or if another flight comes out and and everyone is on it, kind of how the Reach flight was on Xbox. But for the time being, we're sticking with Halo 5. If that changes, we'll let you guys know. And then I also have my achievement streams, which hopefully the Halo Wars servers are working this week. Fingers crossed. Yes. If that happens, then myself and Laird will be on. We'll finish out Halo Wars Definitive Edition for me. 
I'm still working with Bobby to try to get general rank in Halo Wars Classic. We're both a third of the way there. We probably have another eight hours worth of games to get us both there, at least. I think that's right. I'm, I have to check my math on that again. So we're making progress towards it, but you can check us out there. GT's also been streaming some Destiny stuff on his own personal channel, and you usually do that before the show, and then I think on the weekend too, right? Uh, actually, I've been streaming on Tuesday through Friday. Tuesday and Wednesday, I run from 6 to 8, and then on Thursday and Friday, I run from 5 to 7. Right now, I'm finishing up a comparison stream between uh, the original Destiny 2 leveling path and the new light one. I have to admit, with the uh, update that Bungie has made to the leveling, it is much nicer in the current sandbox. The, I leveled a brand new character with the old classic leveling system, and it was 20 hours. And I'm, that character is actually technically not even at a playable level yet. That was just basically unlocking all the worlds. Oh. To where I had access to everything. Okay. That character is would was still significantly under leveled as far as its strength my with the new light destiny to new light uh, the character i'm finishing up is actually more powerful than my main character on my profile oh jeez. <laughs> um i say that's a pretty significant difference pretty close to it at least but it was it it was a it, it was a, a massive change. I hope to, among all the other things, do some type of video or something. I, I haven't really decided what comparing the two. I had uh, some issues with some of the video, so the the sound wound up getting unsynced. Hmm. I don't know how that happened. Um, I didn't manage to fix the problem, but I don't really know what the problem was to begin with, but oops. <laughs> yeah. I, I may just throw those up, do some light editing on them just to edit out the dead areas, you know, like when I take breaks or, uh, when I'm looking stuff up, you know, I might put them on a playlist on my personal account on YouTube, just if people want to watch it and I might do a brief summary video showing you know where things were you know how far i got with each character but it's been interesting it's given me a unique perspective into the game as a bungie fan and i know this is a halo podcast but but bungie did get me into this world they have had their missteps over the past few years and People have called them out on it. What they are doing with their latest game, Destiny, is impressive. And it's encouraging. Uh, they have taken a AAA title and made it free to play. Can you access everything? No. But they've made it to the point where it is as enjoyable as... E as enjoyable as if you'd had bought the game to begin with. You get all the all access to the original game, the complete campaign, the first two expansions. Uh, you get full access to all that, to the raids, uh, you know, all the special items that you can pick up. So if you guys are on the fence about it, uh, pick it up. It's free. Give it a try. You know, if you still don't like it, you don't like it. You haven't lost anything. But I do encourage you to give it a try. It is much different than it used to be. You can be at a playable level where you can play with your friends that have have a year invested in the game within about 10 hours. You can actually be there a little quicker than that. You know, I took a rel rel 
relatively leisurely pace. I didn't crank as hard as I could. You know, I only invested a couple hours a night. Okay. And I basically started that, started this Guardian Tuesday. I will say ever since, and I, I don't mean this to sound bad, but I honestly think this is just the way it is. Once Activision and Bungie separated, I felt a lot better about like possibly trying to dive back into Destiny at some point. Well, the things that Activision has been blamed for are still in the game. Well, it's hard to, to pull some of that stuff out. Well, it's actually, it's gotten worse and it's gotten better all in the same token. Okay. There are some things that are purely only way you're going to get it is to buy it. A lot of the problems that came with the Activision Destiny or Activision Bungie partnership were encouraged by Activision, but Bungie acted on them. Sure. And I'm not saying that, you know, it's all Bungie's fault or all Activision's fault. They both had an equal part in the way the the franchise was marketed and developed. Now that Bungie is their, you know, that they are put, you know, producing their own game, Mm -hmm. things will change. And right now things have changed for the better in the overall picture. And the way they're doing things is moving more towards the classic model. But there still is there's still an in-game store where you can buy things for real money. Now, granted, all the items in that store are purely cosmetic. You know, there are things in there that have no real effect on gameplay. It's all all has to do with looks. They are focusing on, you know, there are things that they, they've they moved back to an expansion style model like they had in Halo 2. Which I'm fine with. Except for the, the difference between then and now mm-hmm. where, you know, this, with Destiny, it's a different game. And I, it's a totally different game to Halo. Anything that is PVE, public spaces, you can have access to. Anything multiplayer, as far as the physical maps and things like that, you have access to at no charge. The things that you pay for are the additional story and then the additional weapons, the special weapons, the exotics that you have to do quests for, things like that, the raids. Um, you, you know, you still have access to all the strikes. So even a person that plays on a free account or plays on a, you know, a free license of the game, uh, can still get on and play with their friends. There's just certain things they can't do. It's like, if your buddies want to get on and raid and you don't have the expansion, you will have to be left out, but they're kind of taking an a la carte position on it, which is an interesting uh, an interesting model. I mean, that's kind of how it was back for Halo 2 and 3 and kind of in that genre of console games is it was all DLC. The one thing I do like about the way they're taking it this way is it doesn't lock people out completely. The way they did in, you know, the way they did it before, if you didn't have the expansions, you couldn't run strikes. So you couldn't paywall, get into basically. the strike playlist because the new strikes were in the playlist and you couldn't access those strikes because you haven't paid for the DLC. Well, that cuts a huge chunk of the game out right there. Yeah. I mean, that's a third of where you go to grind for new gear is right there. Uh, that's That's right back to the same problem we had with Halo 2, Halo 3, Halo 4, Halo Reach is people would buy the DLC to get the new maps, but they could never play the new maps because not everybody had the DLC. You know, it was re- It got to the point where they had to have special playlists for the DLC maps. 
Yeah. So that the people that paid for the maps could actually play the maps. <laughs> right. But all in all, I would recommend that you give them a try. I've been real impressed with the way Bungie has handled most everything in the game. And, you know, that's why I decided to do what I was doing. Um, I did put a poll up on my Twitters and people voted to put me through hell. <laughs> you gave them the choice. I, I know. <laughs> I know I did it to myself. Speaking of polls, right now I, I put a pizza poll out on Twitter and 70% are in favor of me liking Pizza Hut. All are disturbed. Just putting that out there. It's running till tomorrow, so go and vote. <laughs> Can I vote more than once? I, I need to start making accounts here. <laughs> All right. One other thing to bring up is the Discord server. That's kind of where our community exists and talks amongst each other. We also have a Spartan company and an Xbox club. A little update on the company. Uh, First Strike is the one that we are closest to. We're still about 250 away from that, closely followed by Lawnmower, which is splattering people, and we're about 600 away from that one. Oh, and one other thing before we close out, I actually had this open in the tab and I forgot to write in the show notes, but Halo Runs had their sixth annual relay race. This is where they take speedrunners from the speedrunning community and put them into teams. So they have one speedrunner run Halo Reach, then another one run Halo CE, two, three, ODST, Halo 3, 4, and then 5. There were three teams. There was a blue team, red team, and green team. This took place over the past weekend. And the results are green team took first place, and this comprised of people I pretty much don't know. But I'll read them anyways. Pedro Gas, Max Lu, Hark, Ad- Adversary, Fallen Ultima, Zombie Master, and Bat Chat. And then Team Blue finished it next, and Team Red finished it third place. Team, Gr- Team Green finished all seven games, and this is done on easy, in 9 hours, 26 minutes, and 51 seconds. Wow. That's going to wrap it up for the show tonight. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in and listening. Again, next week, we're going to be trying to get John Friend and DJ Blue to do a post-mortem on Halo Outpost Discovery. If that does not pan out, we will be posting on social media what the topic will be. But unless that changes, please, if you attended Outpost, give us your thoughts and feedback and ups and downs of the experience, what you liked, what you disliked, what you really found interesting, what you could think of might make it better, or if they decide to do it next year, what you'd like to see for next year, all that kind of stuff. You can do that on Twitter, Facebook, or Discord, wherever you want to send it over to us. We will take it and we appreciate it. Any final words, GT? Look forward to seeing everybody tomorrow night at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time, right here on Twitch, Mixer, and YouTube. If you'd like to join in, feel free to shoot me a message on Xbox Live at Godzilla T. All righty. Hope to see you guys tomorrow. If not, catch you all next week on the live stream. And if you download this, thanks again for listening. We'll catch you all next week. Keep on fragging them trucks.